plus bx plus c, right? Such that what? What's the condition for w? We could also write it out. Such that what? Such that a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c is equal to 0, right? I mean, that is logically equivalent. Is another way you could attack it, just directly, if you don't know polynomial theory. If you don't have confidence about that, you can attack it directly. It's way slower, but you can do it. And you see what happens is you get this equation that c is equal to minus 9a minus 6b, right? And so then you can put that over into here like this, and you get ax squared and plus bx plus, well, c was what? Minus 9a minus 6b, such that a and b are real numbers. Which then, we could do some sneaky stuff like, uh, I don't know, how about this? This is really what? A times x squared minus 9 plus b times what? x minus 6, I think. Do tell me if I make an arithmetic mistake here. So apparently, w is the span. It's the span of x squared minus 9 and x minus 6. Oh, by the way, the span notation, still true, still works for abstract vector spaces, just like it did before. I only talked about spans of column vectors up to this point, but we can just as well take the span of matrices or polynomials or other things. It has the same meaning. It's a set of all finite linear combinations of x squared minus 9 and x minus 6. Yep. Is there a reason that 6b is 3b? I really think that that is a mistake. Thank you. I was about to say that this, this is very troubling because x minus 6 is not in w, right? Plug in 3 into this, what do you get? 3 plugged into x minus 6, we get minus 3, which is not 0. It's not a good sign. which is because that was a 3. Because that was a 3. All right, there we go. I feel better. Now, of course, if you go my root up here, you get what? a times x squared minus 3x plus b times x minus 3, such that big A and big B are real. So my calculation shows us that it's equal to the span of x squared minus 3x and then x minus 3. So the spanning sets can look kind of different, right? Hmm. Interesting. These calculations will soon be important to you. We are not theoretically there yet, but it's, yeah. All right, a different example. And then we'll probably stop for a day. Do I have, am I over time already? Oh, so very brief example. R2 by 2, if we look at W equal to, you know, A in R2 by 2, such that, you know, um, A11 plus A12 is equal to 1. We can disprove that this is the subspace of the vector space R2 by 2 very simply, right? It's a subset, fine. Number one always works on most always. But number two, we get into trouble if we look for zero. What would zero, what's the zero matrix? Zero, 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 zero right? Is not an element of W since what? Zero, one, one plus zero, one, two is zero plus zero which is 0, which of course is not equal to 1, right? So this set fails to have the 0 vector, so it's certainly not a subspace of the 2 by 2 matrix vector space. As a general rule, if the thing is defined by equality or the equality is not 0, it's probably not a subspace. If your thing is defined by inequalities, it's probably not a subspace. If it's defined by equality, meh, it's probably a subspace as a general guide. 
I have to work pretty hard to make equalities not turn out to be subspaces. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. Sorry to blather on about the test for so long today.